Turns out I made a small mistake. Hello YouTube. So this is a quick video to correct or clarify a couple of things I said in the last video on False Widows, and also tell a bit of a story. So Tone Killick, who contributed quite a few photos to that video, posted it on his Facebook page. Now first into the comments was amateur wildlife photographer Jason Steele, who pointed out a couple of things. One, I had said in the video that false widows tend to lack bright colors, and that's a way to know that they're not actual widows. Now this is mostly true. But Jason pointed out that Steatota piculiana, a European species of false widow, does occasionally have red, orange, or white markings on the back of the abdomen. Now I didn't mention that in the video, but I probably should have. So Steatota piculiana is sort of the exception to the rule, but it's out there. So if you're in Europe, a widow-esque spider with bright markings might just be one of these. So how do you tell these apart? Well, the subtle differences are that in the European black widow, the markings are more separated from each other, and they're often but not always outlined in white like this, while the markings on a Steatota piculiana tend to be more of a solid stripe, and they don't have that white outlining when the markings are there at all. Also, the legs of a Latrodectus are also longer and skinnier relative to its body. A more reliable way to tell the difference is the eye arrangement if you can get a good look at it. So this diagram was done by Jason Steele and is an excellent tool in this case. So on the left is the eye arrangement of a Latrodectus. And on the outside eyes, which are called the lateral eyes, you can see that there's obvious separation between the top and the bottom ones. On the right is the eye arrangement for Steatota and you can see that the lateral eyes are basically touching each other. So that's a good way to tell these apart. Now second, he reminded me that not all Latrodectus spiders have that hourglass mark on the bottom of their abdomens. So be aware that not having that mark doesn't necessarily mean that it isn't an actual widow. However, no false widows actually have the hourglass. So if you see the hourglass, it's definitely Latrodectus. If you don't see it, it might not be probably isn't. And on European black widows, that hourglass might not be that obvious. Now this is where the story gets interesting. So Jason also pointed out that he couldn't find anything in the literature verifying what I had said about Latrodectus, or true widows, having teeth on their chalicerae, while Steatota spiders, or false widows, did not. So I went back and checked my notes. Turns out I straight up made a mistake and got it mixed up. Latrodectus lack teeth on their chalicerae, while Steatota tend to have one or two. Also, I think I've been saying that word wrong, so I should start saying it right. What are chalicerae teeth, you may wonder? Well, here's a spider. So this is an Agilinopsis, not a Steatota or a Latrodectus, but this photo gives a good idea. So here are the chalicerae, these things here. These are the moving mouth parts that the fangs are attached to. Here are the fangs, obviously down here. So chalicerae teeth, if they were present, would be right here, sort of tucked in behind and pointing outward toward the fang. Spiders with lots of chalicerae teeth literally chew their food into a kind of stew, together with digestive fluids that they kind of spit on it, because the teeth let them do that. So they sort of mash the food between the fang and those teeth. Spiders like the black widow, which don't have those teeth, have to sort of suck up the body fluids through the holes their fangs poke in the prey. So Jason pointed out my error. Then Tone started to wonder what the differences might be between males and females in regards to this, specifically on Steatota nobilis. Then Dr. John Dunbar showed up in the thread with some good images of the fangs and chalicerae of male and female noble false widows. So that spurred some more discussion and Tone mentioned that the chalicerae teeth on some male spiders were obviously evolved with mating in mind. So then Dr. Catherine Scott and Dr. Sean McCann entered the chat with some observations about the structure of the male fang and the tooth, and they brought up the question of whether the noble false widow might engage in something called immature mating, which so far had only been known in Latrodectus species. But the particular structure of the male noble false widow's fangs and chalicerae made them wonder whether these spiders did it too. So now we had three professional scientists and two very advanced amateurs bandying these ideas around 
which hadn't really been investigated before. Dunbar was curious enough to put another one of these things under a microscope and take a better image. So you can see what looks like a chalyceral tooth here. Tone Killick had mentioned that what looks like a chalyceral tooth on the female might be more of a condyle or a boss, but in this image it does look more like a tooth. And at this point, everyone seemed to agree that the information in the literature was lacking. There was a gap in the knowledge, there were questions that hadn't really been asked before, and there were hints at possibly collaborating to investigate the question. So what was really cool about this was that it underscored for me that in science, if you make a mistake, it's not the end of the world. And sometimes mistakes spark fascinating questions and conversations that otherwise might not have happened. And mistakes are best made in a collaborative environment. Not only do they lead you to learning, but they can drive discussions that take all of us even further and get us thinking about things that we hadn't really thought about before. So if you're interested in this stuff, get involved in a community, a Facebook group, bugguide.net, iNaturalist, something, and put your observations and even your best guesses out there and see what happens. So I hope this clears up my error. Sorry I didn't get it quite right the first time. And thanks for watching. Cheers.
you get your head shoved in a toilet. 